all of you from other places, not too bad, great, okay. Great, so, um, so welcome to UCSF Mission Bay. For those of you who are not from here, um, just wanted to tell you what our campus is. This, um, this is our beautiful new campus at UCSF. And we have a new hospital that just opened this February. This is what it looked like around the year 2000. So there was nothing here. This was a wasteland. In fact, it was pretty unsafe. Um, there were an occasional killing and you know <laughs> entertainment like that around here. But look what we've done. So uh, the beauty of this is that because UCSF um, moved in and we paid the city a dollar for the land, not a bad real estate deal, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have now cr created this vibrant ecosystem that includes industry, uh, companies, and a lot of venture capital across the street. We wish they invested more in our very early stage startups, but at least they're here. Um, so it's been, it's been a, a terrific um, growth and, and um, central, central force for the area, for San Francisco. So what is i -Corp? Okay. This is a program that was started by the National Science Foundation. And the reason they started it was they felt that they were not getting good productivity out of their SBIR grants. How many of you have had an SBIR? Not too many yet, but a few, okay. Um, so they, they um, said, we need to do something different here. And they created this national program now, how did this start? This started because of a man named Steve Blank. Does anyone know Steve Blank? Know who he is? Okay, some of you do. Most of you do. So Steve was teaching Lean Launchpad at Stanford and at Berkeley, and he was blogging about it. And um, some guy at the NSF happened to read his blog, and he said, wow, this is pretty interesting. So they flew out to see the class at Stanford, and at the end of that, they said, we want to do this. And they created this program. So it started in 2011. And today, there are 120 institutions around the country who are, have taken it up. We, we are one of them. We're actually, um, as is Berkeley and Stanford. Um, there are over 500 teams, teams like yours, who have gone through this program. So there's a huge base of knowledge right now about how effective this program is. Um, and and the, um, the original course was focused on tech. And we said, wow, we, we want to do it here at UCSF. And we're clearly not a tech institution. So how can we make this relevant for life sciences and healthcare? Um, at this point, uh, because of the material that we've developed here, the NIH has piloted our curriculum. And, and, and they're going to be extending it. So we've really had a great influence on this program in the United States. So we created the model here. Um, it was a pilot at NIH in Washington. And I just learned last week that the NIH intends to continue this and expand it. So very exciting. So today's course um, is under something called the Centers for Accelerated Innovation. And, and the part of UC Braid. Does anyone know what UC Braid is? Because we're part of it. Okay, good. We're everyone but Berkeley. So UC Braid is the medical campuses of UC. Um, so that's, that's the sponsor for the course under an NSF grant today. So this is just all context for you. Okay, here is our campus representation. It's UC Braid plus Berkeley, because we're such good friends and neighbors, and we do a lot of stuff together. Um, and this is what the teams look like. So there are 23 teams. Um, this is how they break out. You can see that we have pretty even distribution among device, therapeutics, and digital health. And then diagnostics is even more popular. Um, so pretty nice mix. And you, you guys will get a chance to, to meet each other and talk to each other and find out either what another campus is doing. Actually, I recall there's one or two teams that's a cross-campus team. There's probably a UCSF Berkeley team here. Is there one in the audience? Yeah, OK. And there's, a, there's anyone else have more than one campus on your team? What, what's your campuses? Uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Nice. LA and San Francisco, great. OK, anyone else? Yeah? We have UCLA and UCSF. Excellent. And what do you have? You're from another UC? Yes, from UCSF. 
Okay, three campuses, wow, that's got to be amazing. <laughs> you know, it'd be interesting to see if we think differently. So, so one thing we've learned in doing startups is diversity is good. Diversity of backgrounds, of opinions, of training, um, of experience. It's much stronger to have a team that's made up of a, a diverse group than to have three postdocs in the same lab, for example. So, um, so I'm always pleased when I see this diversity. This is great. So let me introduce the teaching team. Anyone see that movie? <laughs> I guarantee you did. For those of you who haven't, it's called Whiplash. And this is not the teacher you would want to have. <laughs> so, um, it's a very impactful movie. But our teaching team is fantastic. Um, <laughs> so I am course director. I'm also NSFI core national faculty. As I, I lecture here at UCSF. Um, but I'm, I'm from the private sector. And this is a theme that you'll see in our teaching team. Um, we all have MBAs. We've all worked in businesses. We've either been entrepreneurs, we've worked on startups, and, and, and in my case, I've been a C-level executive. Everyone knows who a C-level is, C, a C-something, CEO, CBO, CFO. C-level executive in venture-backed companies. So I've had to report to venture capital boards and, and so on. So that's, um, that's me. Um, Dave, Sharon, Dave, in the back. So the teaching team sits in the back, OK? Um, Dave comes out of the Berkeley Haas Network, where he is faculty in entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, he is, has a very lofty title, Assistant National Faculty Director for NSF i -Corps. So he's up there in the i -Corps hierarchy. He is impacting. Keep on thinking of that. I'm, just, I'm building you up, Dave, so they're going to listen to every every word you have to say. So he actually sits on the curriculum committee that um, puts to, decides how things should be structured at NSFI Corps. And Dave is also an entrepreneur. So again, a business background and MBA himself. And then Todd Morrow, Todd in the back, OK. Um, Todd is also NSFI Corps national faculty. He is Bay Area I Corps faculty director, so he runs the Bay Area I Corps, which this is not part of, but um, related to. Uh, he is managing director of the venture management group. He's founded three life science companies, and he also teaches at Berkeley and Haas. Those two guys have taught, you know, probably is it 20 of these each? 20 I, I Corps? What do you think? Something like in that range. Uh, 20. You get to a certain age and you can't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> taught, tons, taught tons of them, so um, they're really a great asset to have on our teaching team. And the TAs are also amazing in their own right. We've got Charlene. Where's Charlene? Is she in? Charlene D. Nee. Okay, so Charlene has a dual role. She is uh, the new program manager for the Entrepreneurship Center here at UCSF. She is also lead TA. She has a Harvard degree. She's been um, very seasoned and, and is doing a great job in all the production logistics. Lucia Makaris, where's Lucia? Okay. Lucia, Lucia's got an interesting story. She is chief medical officer for a startup called Epibiome. She's a vet, DBM. And she's a Lean Watchpad alum of the last course we ran, which was over in March. Lucia, why did you want to do this again? You just did this. <laughs> Tell us. I mean, so I can say that you know, we when we started the Lean Launchpad course, we were kind of jumping on a moving train. So some of you are doing this course before you've actually started your startup. Um, but for us, we were in progress, so it was really critical for us to go through this process of understanding whether what we were developing had any market or not before we got too down, far down the road, wasting our investors' time and money on something that wasn't really going to be, of, even that, though it could be a viable scientifically, it wasn't going to have a real good place in the marketplace. And so through the course, we were able to really refine um, who our target uh, audience was, who our target customers were, and also what our minimum viable product was to say, you know, we can do a pie in the sky thing, 
but what's, you know, with, with the limited amount of startup money that you have uh, with your seed capital and your early Series A, what can you get out on the market that will get you going as a So company? let me stop you there. Why did you want to do this again? You just finished doing <laughs> yeah. this class. Yeah. So just the value of that. I mean, just understanding, like, you know, I think, you know, being an evangelist for the course and being able to take what we learned and impart to you guys that this stuff really matters um, and to show you guys, you know, I'm a real world example of apply, you know, applied, it's not just a class that you take and you forget, this is a class that you take and you're going to keep applying it and keep applying it and, you know, so coming back and TAing it is an opportunity to kind of Evangel. Okay. <laughs> All right. Great. So, Lucia is a is a um, example number one of this. This stuff is good. And Jashan Jackson, who's sitting in the front. Jashan, wave your hands. He's, he's doing the videos today. Um, Jashan is an MS MBA. He's worked for the Cleveland Clinic and for the Venture Fund, and he is currently a consultant in life sciences, and was an intern for our last class. So, experienced um, TAs. Great, so our mentors who are not in the room, I believe, any mentors here yet? Um, you will meet them tomorrow. Um, so these are very experienced investment and business professionals. They've committed their time to this class, two hours a week to you, and uh, they are very valuable. So every team here should have one to two mentors. The lucky ones have two or sometimes even three, and they're a very important resource that you need to use and use well. They will make a big difference in this class. So let me tell you why you're here. Um, this is what we're going to cover today. Why you're here, teaching team philosophy, what we expect of you, and then team introduction business model canvas. So let's start with why are you here? Some of you may be wondering. Um, because we now know something that we didn't know before about how to do a startup. We know how to build them. Okay, startups are different than big companies, and we've learned with this base of knowledge how to build startups. We can increase your chances of developing a commercially viable product. And we're trying to get away from the old way of doing startups. This is Reed Hoffman's quote. Reed Hoffman is starting LinkedIn. Startups, throw yourself off a cliff and assemble an airplane on the way down. Okay, how many of you feel like you've been there, right? Okay, that's not the way we're doing it. We're going to give you some data to work with. So why does startups fail? The, the real reason startups fail is they never find a product market fit. Okay? They're often, because we come out of science and medicine, we often um, have the solution. But we're not sure what the problem is. And we don't know who the market is and what the need is. So we develop our solution but no one wants it, a big reason for failure. We're going to keep you from doing that here. So we will increase your chance of success. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to guide you on this great interviewing process. You're going to do 70 interviews over the seven weeks of this class. And that is where you're going to learn what the market needs, what they want, and what they value. So the objective of this course to take an idea that you have and build it into a business if it's a viable idea. Um, the business model canvas, you've all looked at that. Okay, There are nine different boxes there. At this point, all you have are hypotheses. Okay? You really don't know anything until you've gone through this process. You have some good guesses. You're going to check them out and see if they're real. You're going to test it. So we're going to stay over here on the left hand side. We are not executing yet. We're not ready to execute. We are not building a product. We are not doing more research. We are just going to talk to a lot of customers and find out, is this something they want? Is this something they need? How do they do their jobs now? How would they change it? Okay, It's the search for a business model. That's what this course is about. So you will turn your hypotheses into facts. And then this is called customer development. And this is something you should be quite comfortable with because we do come from science and medicine. It's, you take a hypothesis, you do an experiment, right? You get data, and from the data you get insight. The difference is you're not doing this in a lab. 
You're not doing this in the operating room, okay? You're doing this out in the real world, with, in the business world, where people will be able to give you that data and help you figure out if you have, if your idea is viable as a business. So you're going to hear a lot of this, get out of the building, which we abbreviate as OOTB, out of the building. You will see that. Okay, there, there's no, nothing going on inside these walls, okay, that's going to help you understand what, what you need to do. You've got to get out there and talk to customers. Our expectation is you're going to learn a lot, and you're going to say, oh my gosh, I've been thinking for the last two years that this is the way life is, and I was wrong. No one wants to buy this. No one is really that interested. No one says they've got to have it. Okay? And, what, and then you will pivot, change direction. We expect that. There's, I don't think there's a team that doesn't pivot in some aspect of their business model during this class. Okay? So that's a good thing. It's, it's pivoting based on data. We expect you to fail. Okay? That's also a good thing because you're learning. You're learning without spending someone else's money and without spending years of your time. So, you know, at Silicon Valley, we celebrate failure, right? I found this on the web. I love this. The International Day for Failure it really exists. It was started by a Finnish guy in 2010. <laughs> and, you know, if you're lucky, maybe you can go and celebrate something. Like, I failed and I learned and I turned it around. Um, you are going to get out of your comfort zone. You know, comfortable is staying in the lab, talking to your lab means doing your experiments. Not comfortable is going out and talking to strangers and asking them things that you don't know much about and listening, right? Because that's not how we were trained. So you're, gonna, you're going to get out of the comfort zone and, and see what you can learn. And it's a stretch. You're going to be stretching yourself in this class. This is different than what you've typically done. So the objective of the, another objective of this course is to simulate a startup. We're going to put you under a lot of pressure. Okay, and things that you thought were true, you're going to find out aren't true. A lot of uncertainty. Um, we're very unreasonable. That nice teaching team you see and sitting in the back. We're going to be tough on you. Okay, um, we're going to expect you to put in a huge amount of effort to do this class. This is a laboratory. So the books and lectures that you see online and so on, these are all tools. Okay, but this, that is not the answer. And um, this is what a startup is like. You're going to spend long hours. You're going to feel a lot of pressure. You're going to find that it's a roller coaster. Okay, there are times when you go and talk to a customer and they say, God, I love this. When are you going to have it? Can I buy some? And then two days later, you're going to talk to a customer who's going to say, well, I don't really need it. I've got a perfectly good solution and then the cost of switching is too high. Okay? It's a roller coaster. You'll hear good things and bad things. And you have to deal with it. That's just like a startup. Is this a good test of you as entrepreneurs? to see, is this an environment I can be comfortable in? Can I adjust to it, the ups and downs of being in a startup? So the, the startup culture is, we're tough. We're going to be very direct with you. This is not uh, attaboy, a lot of attaboys, good job, coddling you. You're not going to learn that way. Okay, We are fair. Uh, there's no hierarchy. So if you are a lab manager, or a chief of surgery or anything else, doesn't count here. This is a startup. Everybody's equal. You may have different, different jobs you assign each other, but you're all in it together. And we expect the same amount of work from everyone on the team. You can question us. You can challenge us, your teaching team, and push us. OK, this, is, this works both ways. Um, but we will we'll always respect your domain expertise because while we're life science people, we're not experts in your little piece of life science, in your particular technology or your particular procedures. Okay, we respect that. But this is a business course. This is learning how to take your idea and seeing if it can be a business. So you will talk to customers 10 to 15 hours a week. 
I will just let you know that there are teams from Berkeley and Stanford who, when given a goal of 100 interviews over 10 weeks, did 122. They couldn't stop interviewing. We have teams that keep going long after the course is over, who've done hundreds of interviews at this point. Okay? So this is going to seem really hard in the beginning, and at the end you're going to say, boy, I wish I hadn't wasted those first 26 interviews. If I'd only known what I was doing, I just need to do a whole bunch more. So expect that. And the entire goal is finding the product market fit. If you don't ever find product market fit, you don't have a venture. So say it one more time. At least 70 interviews per team. Nice, nice music. Is that Samba doing the Samba? Okay. Um, <laughs> nothing like disrupting a class. Um, okay, a couple of interviewing guidelines. Just make sure that all the interviews that you do add value, that they are focused on customers, someone who might buy or influence the purchase of or impact your business. Okay, so when we did this class at UCSF last time, everyone went down the hallway and talked to their lab mates and then the lab down the hallway. And all we saw were a lot of UCSF interviews, that doesn't work. That's not going to help you, that's just going to be a waste of time. So we are not going to give you the contacts, you're going to figure it out for yourself. This is a real world, this is what you would do in a startup. So what do we expect? Full contact, everyone participating, lots of time outside, you're going to do all the work you've been assigned, the deliverables, weekly. We have lessons learned presentations, you're going to update Launchpad Central, I know some of you have had problems with it, we'll get that worked out, and many hours outside the building. In July, the last two days, we're going to have lessons learned presentation, it's a presentation on here's where we started, Here's where we got to. Here's where we've ended up. This is what we learned. It's not a pitch. And then a two-minute video, which we'll talk about another time. A lot of fun. Um, lesson learned presentation. What we thought. We went in this week. We thought that our buyers were going to be doctors. We interviewed 10 doctors in different institutions, and we found out that actually they're not the buyers at all. Okay, You're going to show that on the business model canvas, crossing things out that you thought, adding things in that you learned. And then what you're going to do next based on that knowledge. So what's due today? Five customer interviews. You're all to come here with five interviews completed. You're going to give a three-minute presentation later this morning. Um, you're going to show your business model canvas, which at this point is just hypotheses. Um, you are going to have scheduled customer interviews for Tuesday and Wednesday, and then talk about the process to generate interviews. So how to get them, how to get them set up, how, what interviews are you going to go for. Um, and we also recommend office hours, which every instructor is offering to you, uh, a great use of resource that's available to you. Do Tuesday, five more customer interviews, and follow the syllabus. And do Wednesday. So by the time Wednesday rolls around, we expect that you will have at least 15 interviews completed. Um, and follow the schedule. Okay, any questions on this so far before I go into the schedule today? So today we're going to have a lot of, a lot of talking to you. Um, that's not going to be the case at all in the next two days. So we're, we're going to see if, if we can impart a lot of information. We're going to talk about the business model canvas and customer discovery, team presentations, then three minute presentations, then what a value proposition is, customer segments, interviewing, customer discovery, we'll have an interviewing exercise, uh, Launchpad Central training, somebody from Launchpad Central will be here, and then office hours tonight. Tomorrow, OOTD, what is it? All right, you got it. Okay, out of the building. You don't show up here at 8 a.m. You're out of the building doing interviews. You come in uh, in the afternoon, late afternoon, and at 6 o'clock we're going to have a great panel on the different sectors of life science with experts from therapeutics, diagnostics, devices, and digital health. 
We are then going to have an introduction to your mentors. For those of you who are here local and have local mentors, they will be here. Um, those who are remote, I guess you can talk by phone. Um, and then we'll have some team presentations at 7.30 tomorrow. The team presentation is eight minutes. And then office hours. And then Wednesday, OOTB, again. Okay, class starts at 2, team presentations, then we'll do some WebEx training because we're going to be on WebExes when we're not together. Uh, a recap, and then for those of you who can stick around, office hours again. That's the schedule. Uh, WebEx sessions start at 5.30. Okay, we'll start with your presentations and then we'll have lecture and discussion at 7.30. Um, and then the last two days back here, we're going to have um, the day before the final day. We'll have breakouts, panel discussions, dinner networking. Um, and then on the last day, we have Steve Blank himself, who will be here. Final team presentations and videos. We'll talk about next steps and where do you find funding and, and uh, SBIRs, et cetera. OK, I see yawns. Is this? <laughs> up. Um, questions? Any questions? Yes. How is the curriculum life sciences focused? Um, so it's it, it it's just the nuances of things that are appropriate for us. For instance, in the tech focus, you don't hear about FDA, you don't hear about regulation, you don't hear so so all the all the things that make it specific, the dynamics you will see when we get to minimum viable products, the the what they look like. They're not all going to look like websites. Um, so it, it's throughout. It's throughout. Yes? Why 17? Why not 50 or 100? Well, we, we were actually probably should have been 100, um, which is the normal class. But we, um, we decided to go, go a little bit lighter because it's only seven weeks and during the summer. Um, but when we do it here at UCSF, it's 100. And the standard is 100. So great question. Should I boost it up? What do you think? No. <laughs> I think you'll be lynched, right? <laughs> Other questions? All right. Um, final deliverables. OK, we talked about that already. And the MVP will talk about that. At the end of this whole thing, you will decide whether you, your venture is a go or no go. Okay, you will then know enough to be able to make some sort of a judgment. Sometimes the judgment is, we think it's a go, we're going to do another 50 interviews to make sure. But sometimes it's clearly, it's a no-go. We tried everything. We couldn't find product market fit. Either answer is just fine. Okay, You don't get rewarded for a go. You get rewarded for making, making an informed judgment based on the data. Okay. This question always comes up. We are not talking about IP here. You should not be talking about IP out when you're doing interviews. Okay, this is a business course. You are going to focus in. First of all, you're going to listen to people. What do you do? How do you do it? What's your problem? What, you know, what are the solutions you have to your problem? That's not your IP. Then when, at the point in the course where you actually start talking about your idea, okay, it's at the level of benefits. And we're going to learn what a value proposition is in a couple of hours. Okay? It's never about the IP. So I, I want everyone to be clear. Everything here is open. We have no CDAs. You're not going to go ask anyone you interview for, hey, would you sign this document first before you went? No. You would get no interviews. OK, so IP is not on the table. OK. Um, just showing, can you quickly do Because I'm running a bit behind schedule. But I'm going to share two quick videos with you. Um, the first one was done by a student team. This is their final video. A student team um, from UCSF. Last time. Great. Just kick it off. Serge is a PhD student at UCSF working on making complex mathematical models for drug dosing. He's been looking to apply his research so that it can provide real clinical impact for patients. One day, Serge's lab is approached by Dr. Janelle Boyle, a clinical pharmacologist. Janelle needs help personalizing dosing of busulfan, a drug used to treat children with leukemia. Busulfan is very hard to dose. A low dose won't work well, resulting in poor outcomes or a switch to a more expensive drug. But too high of a dose can be severely toxic. 
Janelle currently uses manual, time-consuming methods to calculate the correct dose. She needs a quicker way to provide the right dose for her pediatric patients. Surgeon's lab may implement the mathematical dosing model in a digital app to personalize resulting and dosing. The app was well received, so Serge, his lab mate Ron, and two of his colleagues Nina and Ron Beer decide to explore this idea more. Is this a problem for other clinicians or drugs? Could this be a real business? We started off with several guesses, took our guesses to Lean Launchpad and searched for product market fit. Over 10 weeks, we interviewed healthcare practitioners from many hospital systems. We initially thought for drug classes that we could apply our technology to almost any drug. But what we learned is that a subset of drugs that are very difficult to dose stand to benefit most from our technology. We explored different healthcare settings and learned that acute care clinics would benefit most. For implementation, we learned that Excel and standalone apps are just not good enough. Integration into the workflow is a crucial feature for healthcare practitioners. To drive adoption, we learned that it was most important to engage with key opinion leaders to influence other clinicians. With Lean Launchpad, the team found product market fit. Their MVP helps clinicians quickly calculate an accurate, personalized dose for their patients. They created InsideRx, a platform for personalized dosing that helps make precision medicine a reality. Okay, so a lot of learning that went on with this team. This team, since taking the class, has been accepted into a digital health accelerator and raised $350,000. So it was very, they started out thinking they had this narrow app and they learned a whole bunch of stuff that showed where they were sort of off base um, and, and now working through the new knowledge they've got. Play the next one? So um, this comes from a team that uh, in our first class here. So uh, we're, we're Vitruvian medical devices and our product is uh, something to treat hernias before they happen from people who have surgeries. We've had 14 interviews. We uh, changed our canvas a little bit. Um, we are talking mostly with surgeons. So of the 14 uh, interviews that we did, over two thirds were, were with actual surgeons. Um, but we said that we had a product that might you know, cost $1,000 that would a hernia. They said they would pay actually $20,000 if we had a product that could prevent a bio, bio leak. So Hobart's pupils dilated at that point. <laughs> so not, not, not the surgeons, but his pupils dilated. If we could prevent the bio leak for that surgeon, they would pay a lot more money for that. But for the, the product that we're proposing, they even thought $1,000 might be too high for that. And that, that. That would be too high of a price to pay for that. So these are things that we learned. Awesome. So did you feel like this was a worthwhile week? Did you learn something? Oh, it, it, it saved us probably several years worth of... No, seriously. Of, no, seriously. Because our, our thought is that surgeons would embrace this, right? And so what we didn't realize is that they're not embracing it because they don't think it's a, a problem that they have. And what was the last phrase you used before I interrupted? This would save you several what? Years. I can't wait for the next nine weeks. <laughs> so that was week two.